If you've decided that you want to get a new aquarium and get started in this hobby, or if you're a seasoned veteran that's been in this lifestyle for quite some time, the decision of what size aquarium can always be one of the most difficult decisions to make. Well, that's what this video is for. We're going to go over the most popular aquarium sizes so that you can make your decision on what's going to be best for you. The first few tank sizes that we talk about in this video are going to be very similar in that they're all very small, they can be put pretty much anywhere, and there's a lot of really fun projects that you can do with aquariums this small. The first one is five gallons. Five gallon aquariums are great for fish keepers that are into the tiny nano fish, the fish that stay really small and don't need tons of space. The first pro of a five gallon aquarium is the size. The fact that they can go anywhere, like on top of your desk, on a bookshelf, or even on your nightstand. They're super cheap to set up. The starter kits for them are less than $75 and they include everything you need, or you could go bare bones and just filter it with a sponge filter and save even more money. Five gallon aquariums are also really easy to move. You can drain half the water out of it and it's only gonna weigh like 30 or 40 pounds, so you can just carry it around wherever you want. And that's great if you're somebody like me that's kinda always moving stuff around. But unfortunately, not all is perfect with five gallon aquariums. There are some cons too. First is you're limited to the types of fish that you can keep in them. With them being so small, you're not gonna be able to keep goldfish, cichlids, or some of your larger community fish. But if you're into the small fish or shrimp, you're good to go. And the last con is with them being so small, they can get really dirty really fast. So you're gonna need to be on your A game when it comes to maintenance, but come on, let's not complain about it too much. I mean, it's such a tiny tank, it takes you like 10 minutes to clean it. You're not that busy. are my absolute favorite size tank. You do have limitations on what kind of fish you can put in there, but for the most part, you have quite a few to choose from, especially my favorite, which is betas. Maybe not cichlids so much, but eh, betas are good, right? The pros are very similar to the five gallon in that you can put them pretty much anywhere. They're cheap to set up and easy to move around, and the good thing is you've got a lot more options for fish. The cons for a 10-gallon are pretty much the same as a 5-gallon, so we really don't need to waste that much time going there. We've done videos on specific fish and tank sizes for those fish. I'll put a card up here so you can go check those videos out. With a 20 gallon aquarium, your options are very similar to that of the five and the 10 gallons. But when we're talking about 20 gallons here, we're talking about getting into some serious weight. So you're gonna have to pay attention to the type of stand that you put it on and where in your home you're putting it. You don't want your floor to come crashing down. A 20 gallon aquarium is gonna weigh around 225 pounds when it's full of water. That's a lot, so you'll definitely wanna make sure it's in a good, secure spot in your home. It doesn't need to be on a concrete surface like some of the tanks we're gonna talk about in a bit, but you've still gotta pay attention to where you put it. With 20 gallon aquariums, you can definitely still get by very efficiently with sponge filters, but with this size aquarium, it's time to start thinking about power filters too. Sponge filters are awesome, but sometimes you want more options like being able to adjust the flow rate and add things like biomedia. With a 24 or 30 inch length, depending on whether you choose the 20 high or the 20 long, you can start getting into some larger fish, but let's not go crazy. You're still not ready for discus or goldfish, but pretty much all community fish, live bearers, and even some of your dwarf cichlids will be perfect in this size tank. Just be smart about it and definitely pay attention to where you're putting this thing. In 
my opinion, 29 gallon aquariums is when things start to get really serious. You've got a lot more options to choose from as far as your filters, your lights, and so many other things. Yes, you can still use sponge filters and 29 gallons, but I feel like this is really when you wanna start seriously considering a hang on the back filter or even an internal filter like the Shark from CJ. I happen to know a site that has sold over a thousand of these sharks. And the really cool thing is that the owners, they're great people, really nice, super friendly. I couldn't say enough about them, just great people. I'll go ahead and put that link in the description for you. With a 29 gallon tank, you can start getting into some of the large fish like angels, gouramis, and some of your smaller bunas. They'll not only thrive in a tank this size, but they'll also have enough room to breed, which is a great way to take this hobby up a level. You take a 29 gallon tank, you stick some super tall plants in there, throw your angels in there with a few tetras, and you're gonna have an amazing tank with a lot of activity. Yes, you get me for two in a row because John demanded to get the 55 gallon one because he's such a child. A 40 gallon breeder might be only 11 gallons more than a 29, but it's a huge step up when it comes to the footprint. The extra six inch in length and six inch in depth gives you all kinds of opportunity for some amazing aquascapes and breeding projects. Filtering a 40 gallon is again gonna be open to your preference. Sponge filters are perfectly acceptable and power filters are even better. Let me know in the comments section why this particular aquarium is called a breeder. I'm not just asking to ask, I seriously just don't know why. All right, now it's time to get serious. When you jump up to a 55 gallon aquarium, everything is bigger. Bigger tank, bigger filtration, bigger fish, and yes, much bigger weight. A 55 gallon aquarium weighs well over 600 pounds full of water, so you're gonna have to put some serious thought into where you're gonna put it. This is when it might make sense to start thinking about putting the aquarium on a solid surface like a basement floor, but if that's not available, just try to keep the tank somewhere around the perimeter of your home. This would be where the structure is the strongest. I can remember when I started fish keeping back in 1993, if you had a five gallon aquarium, wait a minute, did that idiot just say five gallon? I'm sorry, I meant 55 gallon folks. You were legit, like you were the elite of the elite. That was a huge aquarium back then. Now, not so much. I've got a 360 gallon aquarium in my garage and people don't even look at that as being all that big. In my opinion, once you get to 55 gallons and up, you should really be considering power filtration like hang on the backs or smaller canister filters. Sponge filters will work, but come on, we're getting serious here. Everyone knows that everything works better with more power. Oh, 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 I'm sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> I'm an idiot. When you graduate to a 55 gallon, you're opening the door to much bigger fish. A lot of your South and Central American cichlids, African cichlids, and even some catfish will be perfectly fine in this size tank, but not all of them. Oscars, blood parrots, Jack Dempsey's, Severums, they'll all be fine, but Dovi? No, just make sure to read up on the cichlids you plan to keep and make sure they're not gonna get over like 12 inches long and they should be fine. But of course, bigger is always better. I'm not gonna do it. You think I'm gonna do it, but I'm not gonna do it. Yes, I am. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. Just like the 55 gallon aquarium, you have tons more options to choose from with a 75 gallon aquarium, but just not that much more. 
John and I were talking about it earlier and we were saying I can't remember ever telling someone a 55 gallon will be too small for that fish. You should really go with a 75 gallon. Maybe there's examples of that, but I really can't think of any. I guess the biggest difference between a 55 and 75 is if you were really wanting to keep Oscars, I'd say, well, a 55 will be fine, but it's not ideal. A 75 will be great, and he can live his whole life in that tank. But let's be honest, with all of the fish we're talking about today, you can't go wrong putting them in a bigger tank. Just think about it. If they were in the lake or the river, they would be having all of the space they possibly could even imagine. I've never heard of someone's fish dying because they were in a tank that was too big. Now I've heard a lot of stories about fish being in a tank that was too small. So I'm just saying. Yep, here it is. The gloves are coming off. This is big time now. It is time to talk about my all time favorite size aquarium. 125 gallon tank is my favorite sized aquarium for a bunch of reasons. First is the versatility of different fish types you can put in them and the volume of fish you can put in there. Second is you can start keeping fish that get significantly larger than the smaller tanks. Your options aren't limitless, but almost everything we keep in the freshwater fish keeping hobby can be kept at 125 gallons. I said almost, not all of them. Don't go put in an arapaima or a red tail catfish in a 125 gallon tank, come on. Think about it, you can put four or five Oscars in a 125, 10 to 12 discus, or you could go crazy and put 150 rummy nose tetras in there. You wanna talk about a conversation starter with your friends? Well, you've got it. 125 gallon aquariums are really where I draw the line with sponge filters. In my opinion, they shouldn't even be considered in this size tank. Can it be done? Yeah, but come on. You got this giant tank, you need some giant filtration. Get a couple large hang on the back filters or a big canister filter and call it a day. But the biggest thing that you need to think about when it comes to aquariums this size and larger is where you're gonna put them. This is gonna weigh somewhere around 1500 pounds once you fill it full of gravel and water and your filtration and your stand and all of that. You're not gonna be wanting to put this on a third floor in your house that was built in the 1800s. Also, a lot of rental properties won't even allow a tank this size to be in the home. This is something that you'll definitely wanna check into because you don't wanna find out about this after you've already spent all that money. Once again, everything John said about the 125 gallon applies to the 150 gallon. I don't even know why I'm doing this. Why didn't you just combine them? I'm sorry, fire your rider. Maybe I should. Anyway, the best thing about 150 is you get the same length and depth of 125, but you get an extra seven inches of height and that makes a huge difference. You totally set me up for that one. <laughs> If you're someone that wants to keep fish that are known for getting extra tall, like discus or angels, 150 gallon is gonna be perfect because of the extra height. Put those fish in with some really tall sword plants and you will have a tank that is an absolute masterpiece. And now I want a 150 gallon aquarium for my discus. Um. Please? Here we go. I guess I'm gonna get a 150 gallon aquarium. I was gonna do this final segment on monster size aquariums, but I've changed my mind. Instead, I wanna talk about one of the most basic concepts in fish keeping. And if you're new to fish keeping, you might not even be aware of this. And that is that larger tanks are easier to take care of than the smaller ones. You might be somebody that's on the fence about getting a large aquarium because you're like, I've got a 10 gallon tank and it takes me forever to clean that. I can only imagine how long it would take to clean this big massive monster tank. Well, I can tell you it's not as bad as you think. 
Think about it, if you're in a 10 foot by 10 foot room with 20 other people and they're all peeing and pooping all over the place and a couple of them are breeding over there in the corner, how long do you think it's gonna take before that room is absolutely unbearable? For me, that would be almost instantaneous because I don't really like being around a bunch of people, especially when they're breeding. But now imagine you're in that same scenario, except you're in a room the size of a basketball court. Yeah, it's still nasty, but you'd be able to tolerate that for much, much longer. Well, again, unless you're like me, I would still wanna be out of there as quick as possible. Fish tanks are the same way. The more room the fish have, the more they're able to get away from each other, and the more water volume there is for food scraps and waste to disperse. Smaller tanks get dirtier faster. They have algae blooms faster, and yes, they even stink faster than larger tanks do, which means you've gotta maintain them a lot more frequently than you would in a larger tank. I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you facts here, folks. Now, it's not like I'm saying larger aquariums are a set it and forget it type thing. You still have to do your work on them. It's just not quite as frequently as you would if it was a smaller aquarium. But I am a large tank guy, so, I guess I'm a little biased. <laughs>